Hey friends, I'm Jill with Whispering Willow Farm and today I'm going to be chatting with you guys about medicinal herbs I'm growing this year on our farm. So we are a small scale flower farm in central Arkansas. We're also growing all of our own family's produce year round while raising a few animals uh, here and there as well. Also I have a beautiful cottage garden that is just packed full of perennial herbs that we're using for holistic remedies for our health, our wellness, our family, our friends. Um, and so each year I'm trying to build out the things that I am establishing in that cottage garden as I have been transitioning more into holistic wellness and herbalism. So I thought I would share with you guys today what I'm starting in my cottage garden. So before we get too far into this, if you are interested in medicinal herbs for beginners, my friend Kaylee Richardson and I over at the Honey Said, she is a beautiful beekeeper and holistic herbalist in Virginia. We created a beginner's guide to growing a medicinal garden. It is a fantastic ebook with over 100 pages packed full of the top 20 easiest herbs we recommend growing with growing guides, harvesting, supporting, Materia Medica, recipes, you name it. So if you are interested in checking that out before we get started, you can just go to the description down below and check out that ebook. We've had such great feedback on it. I know it's going to be a beautiful resource for so many of you guys. But without further ado, let's jump into today's video. So I am starting my seeds from a survival garden seeds. They have these really lovely packs, which is really nice because I find with medicinal seeds, um, it's a little bit harder to source those out or at least the ones that I was wanting to grow. So the fact that survival seeds have these packs, this is the ultimate medicinal herb collection. There are 36 heirloom seed packets in here. I'm just super excited to grow these. They also have a ton of other packs. I have not dived into these yet, but they have the homesteader pack, which is 50 heirloom seeds seed packs and then they have a home garden pack um, which is 30 heirloom seed packets full of just all the great things so if you're interested in their seeds I'm going to put a link down below but today let's dive into the medicinal garden collection let's open this up see what's in here and I'm going to share with you which of these I'm growing and why I'm growing them so they're all beautifully rubber band which is super helpful so you get four packs and let's go through what they are. So first up, we have a common plantain. Now, this is native to a lot of us. So we actually have plantain here in Arkansas um, that we can forage and harvest. Um, you know, there's a lot of great salves you can make with plantain. Um, we don't actually have enough to be able to meet the needs uh, that I would want. So this would be one of those that I would want to start. So plantain's great. It's gonna be great for all things skincare. It also, the, e the leaves are edible, so that's nice too. It's a little dual purpose, packed full of nutrition. Um, and then it's a perennial. So for me, I'm not really wanting to grow a lot of herbs that are annuals, especially in my cottage garden. I'm wanting to set that up as a perennial garden that really kind of, um, takes care of itself, right? It's one of those areas I don't have a lot of time and attention, so I'm trying to create a space, or if I am growing an annual, maybe like Tulsi, which is a basil, I'm gonna let it self-seed so that it comes back. So even the annuals that I'm growing, I treat them as though they are perennials just to take a little pressure off my back of what I need to maintain. So plantain is great. I would say as you're building out your herbal toolbox, plantain's one of those that I would definitely add in but do a little research on it because I guarantee you, you could probably forage for it right in your backyard, especially this time of year. Next up, we have the beloved peppermint. Now, not only is peppermint great for so many different things, you can use it um, in the kitchen for culinary purposes. It has a lot of great medicinal properties as well. One of the things about mint, one of the things I'm very mindful of when growing any sort of mint, spearmint, peppermint, uh, you name it, is it can be very very, very invasive. So in fact, I've got mint still growing from the previous owners of our farm that they planted who knows how many years ago. So I am actually not going to be planting this peppermint because I have an abundance. But if you are growing peppermint, maybe try to put it in a container. It's gonna grow really well in a container. And just make sure that you give it enough space if you do put it in a bed um, that it 
can have that whole space over time because eventually it will end up choking out most of your other plants. Um, so either put it at the end of a bed where it can kind of grow out along the ground or just put it in its own separate container so you don't have to worry about that. But if you do not already have peppermint or spearmint growing in your medicinal garden, this one is a must have because it just has so many beautiful properties. We're using it mostly in teas. It's really great right now in bottle feeding lambs. So I'm drinking a spearmint tea every day with peppermint as well. Just to really open up my sinuses, help me breathe really well. And this is a great one for that. Next up, we have chamomile. Now, I started this last year in my cottage garden, and I just want more. Uh, this is a great calming, soothing herb. I'm using this a lot for my children. I make a bedtime tea for them every night with raw honey, and chamomile is the base of this. They love it. It tastes floral. It smells floral. It's really easy to harvest and store, which I really appreciate as well. And honestly, with these days, like flowers. I mean, you just can't have too much chamomile in your garden, in my opinion. Um, and you need to grow a lot though, because you can tell they are very, very small flowers. And by the time you harvest them to dry, they are even going to shrink up more. So you're gonna want to grow more than you think you might need, but chamomile is a must grow in the medicinal garden. It is so great to have in your tool belt as well, especially if you have littles. This is a great way just to um, add those calming, soothing properties and teas and things like that. Next up, we have echinacea, also known as coneflower. I love this one because every single part of this can be used. So I put in echinacea the first year we bought our farm. So this year will be three years. You can harvest the roots of echinacea after three years and make so many great tinctures with those. But you have the entire petals and leaves that are great to use as well. Um, echinacea is one of those herbs that you really uh, want to grow a lot this time of year to store up for the fall and the winter when you start dealing with uh, flus, common colds, things like that. It's not one of those herbs that you want to take over a long period of time. But if you notice you have an ailment coming on and you're feeling a little sinusy, a little sick, um, you want to come in, treat it fast with echinacea. It does the trick, but you're not going to take it long term but it is so easy to dry. Um, it makes a beautiful cut flower as well, so super beneficial, and it's great. We just cut it down at the end of the year, we'll mulch it a little, it comes back bigger and better, it attracts so many different pollinators, and there are so many wonderful properties to echinacea that it is definitely a must grow. Now, this one you might not think would be something you would have in your medicinal garden, but let me tell you, cayenne pepper is crucial for the medicinal garden. Not only is it a great culinary pepper, you can do so many things with it. There are so many great medicinal properties to growing cayenne pepper that I highly recommend you guys look into this, but this is one of those that you might think belongs in the vegetable garden, but in fact, it belongs in your medicinal garden. Now, the thing with cayenne pepper is this would be considered an annual. You are going to grow it just like you would grow, you know, a culinary pepper in your vegetable garden. So you are going to have to regrow this year after year, but on the back of these seed packets, it actually shares with you how to save the seeds. And since these are all heirloom seeds, you can easily do that. So I would really recommend just be diligent about saving your own seeds so that this is a one-time investment and either let them self seed, which the peppers are going to have a harder time with that. So with things like the peppers, just go ahead and ensure that you're saving some seeds so you have an Enough to plant for the next year. Next up, we have got calendula. Aside from it being absolutely stunning, I love having this growing in my cottage garden. I use this a lot when I'm baking sourdough to decorate different loaves. Um, aside from the beauty here, it is an annual. Um, I have tried to let mine self-seed this year. I will check back with you guys to see if that worked or not, but in case it didn't, <laughs> I am starting more. And so calendula is one of those things that is going to be great for a lot of those external cuts, wounds. You can make it into salves. Um, you can also put it into teas to help with digestive issues as well. But primarily we are using this as a salve for burns, cuts, wounds, scrapes. Um, it's really nice as well as comfrey. I would say the main two salves we are making each year are calendula salves and comfrey salves. And they are great, great powerhouses. But there are so many other beautiful properties that calendula and all these other herbs have 
out as well. And so if you really wanna dive into what all those properties are, all the things you need to know, I really do recommend you guys check out the ebook that I mentioned earlier down below because it's gonna go into all of these in much greater detail. We'll provide a Materia Medica. Now, there might be some herbs I'm sharing with you today that are not um, in my beginner's guide to growing a medicinal garden, but there are probably gonna be some that you find in there that you also won't see on this list today. So the next up we're gonna talk about is oregano. Now, I love growing herbs that are multi-purpose right? For me, um, there's just something about getting a good deal, right? Getting the most bang for my buck. If I'm going to grow it, I really want to be able to use it in the kitchen. We bake a lot of sourdough. I'm making sourdough every single week for my family. So I love being able to go out into the cottage garden and grab different herbs to decorate loaves with, um, to cook with, and things like that. But then, so many of these different herbs I'm gonna share with you today, oregano, sage, thyme, stuff like that, they not only have all these great culinary purposes, which is how we might commonly know them, they are packed full of so many medicinal properties as well. And oregano is no different. So oregano is one of those you want to stockpile and grow as much as you can during that summer season to make sure you have on hand for the fall and winter. It is an anti antioxidant, it's antimicrobial, it is great for respiratory health, for digestive health. This for me, if we're getting sick, I'm making into a tincture and it is really nipping things in the bud. Next up, we have thyme, which is a great perennial herb. This is gonna come back year after year, bigger, better, fuller, which I absolutely love. We'll just do a big hard harvest at the end of the summer um, or even into fall and then we'll mulch really well and I'm telling you, it's a great um, time. I'm usually making into some sort of like oil. We'll do a time infused oil, but time is really great for respiratory. So even putting it into a tincture, um, it's a little bit stronger herb to mix into a tea, but if you have any sort of cough or bronchitis, um, this is gonna be a great herb for that. It can help with indigestion, bloating, gas. It can be great for your oral health. So it is one of those that has multi-purposes, which again, I told you guys, I totally love. And because thyme is such an easy herb to grow, and it does have all of these great medicinal properties, but I can also cook a ton with it. So I like that a lot, especially if you are a beginner. This is a very beginner friendly herb to grow, and I highly, highly recommend it. Next up, we have basil. I believe everyone should be growing basil. You grow it once, you smell it once, you will totally be hooked. I will not have to convince you anymore. Um, basil, I'm using primarily in teas. It has a fantastic flavor and aroma, but it's no for its adaptogen properties, meaning it's going to help you um, handle stress better. It's going to help reduce stress. So for me, um, I've always dealt with a lot of adrenal fatigue um, because I'm not really nurturing my adrenals really well. So one of the things I implemented was taking Tulsi every single day to really target and address and help nurture and heal that area. And it has helped me wonders just putting it in a tea every single day with some oats and some nettle, it tastes beautiful, add some raw honey. Um, so it's really great for stress management. But aside from that, it has a lot of immune boosting properties. It's really great for your gut health, really great for your digestive system. And you can also use it topically for a certain skin infection. So there are so many different things you can do with basil. So like I mentioned, basil is an annual, but it is one of those annuals that it does self seed really well. It'll lay dormant all winter, come back early spring into the summer. And so I am growing this one. I just don't feel like I have enough. Um, I've officially ran out of basil. And so I realized, oh, I still need to grow enough to carry me at least a couple more months. So that is why I'm adding in more basil this year, but it is a great self seeder, super easy to harvest. Just bunch it, hang it upside down um, out of a sunny window that it definitely needs to make your must, must grow medicinal list this year. Next up, we have yarrow. Now this is the common white yarrow, which is something to be mindful of. Because if you start looking for yarrow, you might see a lot of different varieties, maybe like um, 
pastels berry or summer pastels. These are all varieties that I grow. However, I am growing these for cut flowers and they do not have the same medicinal properties as the common white. So it is really important to know um, the scientific names, which is why we really recommend looking at Materia Medicas to make sure that you are buying the right herb that has those medicinal properties that you actually want. And so uh, as you're kind of diving into herbalism, um, into growing medicinal gardens, you'll become more familiar with Materia Medicas and why they are super, super crucial. But I do recommend you guys get familiar with that. Yarrow is one of those specifically. There are um, varieties that are just for cut flowers that don't hold the same medicinal properties. So be mindful of that. I'm growing both, <laughs> but I am only growing those colorful, beautiful ones in a different area. Now yarrow can be made into a salve and it's gonna be great for cuts and wounds, things on the exterior part of your body. It can also help regulate your menstrual cycles. If you deal with a lot of cramping and bloating, you can make it into a tea and you can take it during your um, menstrual cycle and it's really gonna help just reduce all of that for you. It also has a lot of respiratory properties, so it's great to take um, during cold and flu seasons to help clear you out, make it to where you can breathe a lot better. And then again, it is commonly known for um, just kind of being a warrior when it is applied externally um, into some sort of salve. So the Yarrow Skin Salve is pretty common. It's a great um, entry too. I find that sometimes uh, tinctures and decoctions and infusions, those can kind of intimidate a beginner and rightfully so. So I find that uh, making different tea blends are really a good point of entry if you are getting started. And then salves, you really can't go wrong with salves. You really can't have too many salves. That is really one of the things I first started making um, many, many moons ago when I had entered into this holistic journey, and it's because it didn't feel intimidating to me. And so if you're thinking about growing these herbs and you're not sure what to do with them, one, they're gonna store uh, for a really long time if you dry them properly. So why not start with a salve, something that's a little bit easier until you can gain knowledge and experience and then maybe start tackling some of those things that might be a little more intimidating to you like a tincture or a decoction. Now let's talk about St. John's wort. This will actually be my first year growing this in the medicinal garden, not why I have waited this long. I I have no idea because I have heard raves and raves about it. It is a perennial, which is great, which is why I knew I wanted to get it established this year. But when you think about St. John's wort, think about everything, okay? This is antiviral, antimicrobial. It's good for your nervous system if you make it into a tonic. It is good for mood support. There are so many different things that this herb can do. It's so versatile that again, I really like how having those herbs. Granted, I love growing chamomile. I know it's gonna calm me down, it's gonna nurture my kids, it's gonna calm them down. But that is primarily what chamomile is known for, right? Those calming um, properties. When you think about some of these other herbs and they serve so many diverse properties and meet so many needs, it really is great herbs to add into your toolbox because you can pull from them and add a few other things with them and then you really have yourself a well-rounded holistic um, approach to lots of different elements that might come up, which if you're on a farm or a homestead, you know how crucial that can be. So St. John Wort, add it onto your grow list this year as well. Another new one for me is toothache plant. You can see it just looks so, so cool. While we do not deal with a lot of oral issues in our family, knock on wood, um, you just never know, right? <laughs> I'm raising littles. Um, you just never know. And that was one of those things that when I look into my holistic toolbox, I don't have really anything that is supporting your oil health. So essentially what you're doing is you will chew the plant and it has a numbing effect and it has really great uh, properties for your oral health. And so while this isn't something that I think, oh man, um, we really need this, right? I'm thinking things that support our respiratory health, that boost our mind, our spirit, um, really stocking up for the winter months on how to treat colds and flus, sinus infections, earaches. Um, I wanted to still have this because I knew that it was something that was lacking. And so even though I don't necessarily uh, need it now, it's not something that we've typically gravitated to, I just wanted to have it on hand and I have the space to grow it. 
So that is why I'm trying out toothache plant this year. I will keep you guys posted on how it goes. Next up, let's talk about sage. Super beginner friendly. It is a perennial. It is fantastic in the kitchen, but it also has a lot of really great medicinal properties as well. Some of those being, it's great for your respiratory health. So again, if you've got um, a cough, I find with my family, when we get colds, we have this lingering cough that lasts forever. And so I'm really trying to find those herbs that can really, um, um, go in and treat that and can really nip that in the bud for our families, which is why I'm kind of growing a lot of things that really support that respiratory health because I find that that's what we're dealing with the most. Aside from that, it is great for digestion and your gut health, great for oil health. So again, trying to add those versatile herbs in there. And you can also make it into a salve and use it for different skin um, infections. So just one of those great ones. It has culinary properties, medicinal properties. It's beautiful. It comes back year after year. You're looking for an easy herb, this is a good one. So here we have stinging nettle, which is definitely a must grow. It is so versatile. I think it steers people away because of its name. And while yes, it does have stinging properties, you can just be mindful when you're harvesting to wear gloves, but it is so great for your respiratory health. It's anti-inflammatory, it's a diuretic. Um, you can put it in a tea, you can, we have a recipe in our ebook for a pesto that you can make with it. Super, super versatile. I've been drinking this a lot right now as I'm dealing with a lot of allergies. So it really helps just kind of get all of that out. It can easily be made into a tea with some things that taste a little bit better, like, you know, Tulsi or a basil, oats, something like that. Um, so stinging nettle, as long as you're mindful of harvesting um, and preparation and things like that, it definitely still needs to make your list because there are so many great properties. Um, in fact, I know so many herbalists that say if they could only grow one herb, um, nettle would be one that they would not ever live without. So that's just food for thought. And of course, I could not do a video on my must grow medicinal herbs without chatting with you guys about lavender. Now, lavender does have a very floral taste, and I know not everyone enjoys lavender in a tea, but there are so many other things you can make with lavender. We're making bath salts, we're making bath bombs, um, we're making essential oils, and we're infusing it. It has so many great calming properties, which is what it is known for. Now, I actually love lavender. I make a lot of simple syrups. I love having a lavender honey um, latte. It's one of my guilty pleasures, so there are so many fun things you can do with it. Um, I am also, again, decorating a lot of sourdough breads with it. So we use it a lot in the kitchen. But aside from that, I like to have those kid-friendly herbs that I don't really have to worry about. I make this into a spray. I spray it on my kids' pillows at night just to um, really achieve a calming effect, help them calm down before bedtime. It smells really great. We're diffusing it a lot. But aside from all of those calming properties that lavender is most commonly known for, it can help relieve muscle tension. Um, it helps great with headaches. I will just put it on my temples. It alleviates a headache really, really quickly. Also do that with peppermint. It's a great one for that as well. It is great for your skin. So if you can incorporate this in different moisturizers or skin oils, it's very nourishing to your skin. Um, I find that I have uh, just better glowing skin. I deal with less dryness and redness when I'm incorporating um, lavender into my skin routine. It's going to help reduce stress. It's going to repel bugs. <laughs> um, it's great for your respiratory health. There are literally so many different things. And I mean, just look at it, you guys. It's stunning. Um, I'm also growing this as a cut flower and I'm using it a lot in dried arrangements for wreaths and things like that. So when I just think about versatility, um, it is super versatile. I would say for me in central Arkansas, I've had a really hard time getting my lavender to perennialize. I will mulch it much like I do my rosemary thyme, um, all of those things, but I do find it has a harder time coming back, but I'm not giving up. I'm gonna keep trying. So these are the things that I'm adding into my medicinal garden this year. Some of these I already have, I'm just adding more. I have not even touched the surface, you guys. When you get this packet, it comes with all of these herbs I didn't even touch. Now I might eventually add these in. Right now, I just don't have space for them. I wouldn't, um, I was really just picking out the ones we use the most as our family. But there are so many other great ones. We've got lemon balm, borage, valerian, uh, fennel, 
kale, cilantro, whorehound, parsley, bergamot, lemon mint, anise, wormwood, white sage, sorrel, purslane, fenugreek, marigold, lovage, like everything you could possibly want is in this pack. But I get asked a lot, especially as I'm sharing more of this holistic uh, journey. <laughs> we are really prioritizing our health and our wellness and a holistic approach. So I've really been emphasizing on the medicinal garden where it's kind of taken a back burner in the last few years. And so I just wanted to share with you guys what I am growing, what I'm adding to that medicinal garden um, this year. And these are the, some of the things that I am adding, some of the things I think you should add as well. It is never too late to start saying yes um, to your health and wellness and to really kind of take control of that and find a holistic alternative that can support you and have so many multi-purposes as well. So I hope you guys will consider growing some of these. If you have questions, let me know. Again, if you want to snag the ebook, it's down in the description. Also, I have a home apothecary course I recorded with Kaylee at the Honeystead as well. I will put all of the information down below. You can bundle the course in the ebook and get a pretty big discount. So if you want any of that information, you want information on the seeds, it's all gonna be down below. But now I'm about to go get busy in the flower tunnel. So thank you guys for hanging out with me today and I'll talk to you soon.